Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to briefly show you guys scriptable objects inside of the Unity game engine. So a scriptable object is a data container which can store values inside of it and be reused across your different Unity game objects and scenes. So one example for what you might want to use a data container like this for would be something like level settings or difficulty settings, where you might have many different levels that would use the same settings or want to swap settings out depending on the difficulty that your player selects, but you wouldn't want to manually type in all of those settings to every single level or object that is going to use that same set. So you can kind of customize each of your scriptable objects and then reuse all of that same data across your game. And another thing that you can do with scriptable objects is to create uh, many different versions of the same scriptable object and store them inside of your assets and your project. So here you can see that I have a level one. This is a scriptable object stored into the project. It differs from a game object because you can't just drag and drop it into the scene. It's not going to move around on itself. It's just a store of data. But as I'll show you how you do this, you can right click and go into the create menu and then scriptable object. And whenever you want to create another set of level settings or any other scriptable object that you've made for your game, you can just create a new object, type in the name for it, and then customize the settings over here and then use that anywhere that you need that. So how you actually set that up in code is that you would create a C sharp script and you would extend from scriptable object instead of mono behavior, which is what most unity scripts would be based off of. And then up here, you have to give it the attribute create asset menu. And that's going to take a file name, which is the default name for your new scriptable object. And then the menu name, this is the path for how you find the option to create it inside of the menu. So you can give it a root folder name, and then you can give it the name of the object to create. You can even nest multiple levels if you need to. And then when you're back in the project window in Unity, you can right click, go to create, and then you'll notice your scriptable objects is the uh, first folder menu. And then level settings is the final part of the path to create a new scriptable object. So these scriptable objects, you're not really going to write functions for them so that they can do their own things like you would with a game object, but instead you'll generally just have some primitive data types and store values inside of them. So for instance, you could use floats, integers, strings, and then you can have defaults for those just like you could with any other mono behavior. And then when you create the instance of the scriptable object in your assets, you can of course customize the values on each one. So this level two scriptable object, if I want to customize the data for it, I can just come up here have the time limit set to 200, the starting health 200, and the level loaded message, we can say this is the secret level. So now I have two sets of settings, and I can swap those out anywhere that I would take one of those scriptable objects. So for instance, if I load up this other level scene, I might have a level manager object. And then in that level manager script, I may input as the settings, a copy of that scriptable object. So if I open up this script here, you can see we just have level settings. So this is the scriptable object script. So we just take one of those. And then when we have that set here and the game starts, we can print out all of the settings here. Now in the actual game, you'd probably use the values here for something more relevant, like after the time limit has elapsed, you'd set a game over trigger. But this is just the quickest way to see the data printed out. So if I take this level, which has the level one settings, and I just go ahead and hit play here, then you'll see the level one settings all print out in the console. So let's check the console here. You can see our three messages. So welcome to the level is the string. You have 100 health is the integer value, and then 100 seconds to complete the level is the float. So now if I want to change this to another one, I can just click over here, uh, select other scriptable objects of the same type, or you can drag and drop from your project over here. And uh, so now I have the level two settings inside of here. And just like that, I've recustomized a whole bunch of settings all at once. So I can go ahead and hit play here as well. And you can see that the messages have changed. Now, as I mentioned, because these are stores of data that exist in your project assets, you can reuse them across all your other uh, game objects if you want. So for instance, let's just say hypothetically that I wanted the player to have access to the same data. I could just right click here and create a new game object, which would be the player. Go in, add component. Let's just create a player C sharp script real quick. Then all I would need to do is go in, edit here, and give it a public level settings variable. Go back out here, and I can drag and drop the settings I want to use for this player. And just like that, I have access to it. Now, uh, when you do see 
the reference to the object here. It's a little hard to know what the data is exactly, but you can just double click into them and that will load up the same settings into the inspector. So now we're looking at the level two level settings object itself and all of the data inside of here. So if I want to change the data here to affect all of our objects across the game, I just change the values here. And now if I click on level manager, it's referencing the object, which means it's going to be referencing the same data. And if I go ahead and hit play, it should still print that uh, 250 second time limit here to the console as you see. So in a nutshell, scriptable objects are really useful data containers that you can store into your project assets and reuse across any of your game objects that you need. And because they're all referencing an object saved in your project, they're all going to have access to the same data. And you can, of course, create your scriptable objects with the right click create scriptable objects and name of the object settings. You just need to make sure that when you create your scriptable object that you do create the create asset menu attribute up here and give it a file name and a menu name in order for it to show up in the right click menu. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I hope this helps all of you understand scriptable objects a little bit more. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see all of you in my future Unity content.